I have a massive new server build on the docket for next week. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my all new TrueNAS core tutorial series. But for today, I need to move all my Proxmox VMs to their new permanent home. Let's get started. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. And despite the haircut, I swear I'm still Jeff. See? As I said in the intro, next week I'm going to be building myself an all-new TrueNAS core server. But first I need to play musical chairs with a lot of my existing hardware, as my new TrueNAS core server is going to be using the motherboard and CPUs out of my existing Proxmox server. So my Proxmox server is going to be moving over to my Dell R7610, which was formerly my cloud gaming server, because I built myself an Epic 32 core system, which is going to be taking the place of my old Proxmox server. Everyone got that? Good. Before we get started, here's a quick recap of the hardware that's in my Proxmox server right now and the hardware I'm going to be migrating over to. It's running a Super Micro Dual 2011 motherboard with a pair of Xeon E5 2650 8-core CPUs. It's got 64 gigabytes of DDR3-1333 ECC memory and a pair of 480 gigabyte Intel Enterprise SSDs. Meanwhile, my Dell R7610 is rocking a pair of Xeon E5 2670v2 10-core CPUs, so that's 20 cores and 40 threads in total, 128 gigabytes of DDR3-1866 ECC memory, and four, yes, four, Intel 1.2 terabyte enterprise SSDs. The reason I'm migrating Proxmox to my Dell R7610 is pretty simple. Number one, I like the form factor of the R7610, as it's only a 2U server, and my server rack is going to get a little bit more crowded here in the coming months. Moving all of my critical Proxmox VMs to a 2U server makes a lot of sense, especially when I don't need a ton of storage for it, and they were all SSDs anyway. Secondly, this frees up my dual socket Supermicro motherboard and allows me to put that into my new TrueNAS build with a crap ton more memory and a little bit more processing power. And my FreeNAS server certainly needs a hardware upgrade, as it's currently running a Z370 and an i3-8100 with 32GB of non-ECC memory. Lastly, I did want to do a little bit more with PCI Express pass-through, and the Dell R7610 has a lot more PCIe lanes available to it than my current Proxmox setup. So with all that said, how do you migrate from one Proxmox server to another? Now there are a couple different methods to migrate virtual machines between Proxmox installs, and I'm going to show you the quickest and simplest method that I've found. It involves backing up the virtual machine from one Proxmox server and then restoring it on the other. All that's required to get started is to install Proxmox on your new server, which by the way I have a great tutorial for right up here. It is for version 5.4 of Proxmox, however the process is exactly the same as far as today's current version, which is 6.2.4. So first off, here is my existing Proxmox server, and over here in the second tab is my brand new Proxmox server on my Dell R7610. Now I've already migrated the majority of my VMs because Honestly, the process just takes a little while and I didn't want to sit here while filming this video and wait for all of them to go. However, we are going to back up and then restore one of my VMs in this tutorial. VM number 100 is my Pi-hole server and it is still running on my old hardware. So let's go ahead and get it moved over to the new server. First off, we're going to open up the console and we're going to power down this server. Next up on the Pi Hole server, we're going to go down to the Backup tab, which is very aptly named, and we're going to select Backup Now. Now by default, Proxmox will back up your virtual machine to whatever storage medium you have your VM installed on. So if you have it installed on local storage, it's also going to write your backup to local storage. Now in my case, I do have a couple storage locations available to me. I have my local storage on my Proxmox server, and I also have a CIFS share mounted on my FreeNAS box. If you back up to your local storage, you're still going to need a method to get the backup data off of your local server and into your new Proxmox server. Versus backing up to a network location, you can simply mount the network location on your new Proxmox server and restore directly. For this video, I'm going to go ahead and back up to local storage as I feel that's going to be what more people have. For the mode, we're going to select Snapshot, and then for compression, we're going to select LZO Fast, which is honestly the fastest way that I found to back up your server. And go ahead and hit backup. And if the speed is any indication, this process still does take a little while, so I'll see you after the break. Now that the backup is complete, it is time to actually get the backup file off of our Proxmox server and move it onto the new one. Now again, that backup file is located on the existing Proxmox server, so we're going to use a program called WinSCP, which is essentially an SSH program that gives us file browsing access. Connecting is pretty darn simple. Enter your host IP address, username as root, and then your password, and click login. By default, this will drop you into your root home folder. However, that's not where our backups are kept. So we're going to go up a level to the main system directory. We're going to scroll down to VAR. 
we're gonna go to LIB and then scroll all the way down to VZ. And this is the root directory of our local file system for Proxmox. Backups are kept in the dump directory. So if we open that up, we can see our VM number 100 backups right here. So these are our log files and there is our actual backup file. Over here on the left side of the screen is the local C drive on, well, your computer, or in this case, my computer. So I'm gonna create a new directory here and we're gonna call it backup. And inside of that is where we're gonna move our VM100 backup. Luckily, this part goes a little bit faster. There we go. Now we're gonna to connect to the new Proxmox server via WinSCP and transfer this file over there so we can restore that backup. So again here, it started us out in the root home directory, but we're gonna to go to VAR, LIB, scroll all the way down to the bottom to VZ and then open dump. And we're gonna transfer this file over to the dump folder. Once the file transfer is complete, you can go ahead and close out of WinSCP. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump on over to my new Proxmox server and do basically the same exact process to restore that virtual machine. So if we jump on over to Proxmox server number two and we go down to our local storage and then click on content. Over in the right side of the screen, you can see a brand new backup file that was, hey, captured about an hour ago. So if we click on that file and then go up to restore, we're gonna restore this VM ID as number 100. Again, you can use pretty much whatever number you want there as long as it doesn't conflict with any of the other VMs that you're running. And for your storage location, I'm gonna select my local storage on this Proxmox server, but you can select whatever works for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit restore. Now, luckily the restore process goes much, much faster. As you can see, this is happening in real time. We're already about 30% of the way through. Once the window says task okay here at the bottom, the job is done. So we can go ahead and close that window and go on up to our brand new VM number 100, which is my Pi-hole server. Now, the really nice thing about the backup and restore functionality inside of Proxmox is even when moving to a new host machine, it actually restores all of your original settings. So how many CPUs, how much RAM, how much storage, it's all there. And now all that's left to do is to start it up. And if I go to the IP address of my Pi-hole server, we can see that it is back up and running. Now I did mention that instead of using local storage and then having to win SCP into your box and transfer your backup file from one server to another, you could actually just save your backup file directly to a file server on your network. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. Back over here on Proxmox server number one, I'm actually gonna click on the data center icon and then click on storage. You can see right up here at the top, I have my FreeNAS server mapped as a CIFS directory. And the way I did that was by clicking add up here at the top and going down to a new CIFS connection. The very first fillable field is for ID. And this is what Proxmox will display as the friendly name for your file share, not necessarily the proper name of your file share. So we're just gonna name this craft FreeNAS. Under server, you can do the host name or IP address of your file server. So in this case, my IP address is 192.168.1.200. Under username, type in whatever username gets you access to the server as well as the password. Now the really cool thing about this Proxmox menu is if you've entered all that information incorrectly, under the share dropdown, you can just click on the name of the file share you want to connect to. So in this case, I have a Proxmox directory already on my FreeNAS server. Now over here on the right hand side of the menu is an option called Max Backups. And I've heard a little bit of confusion about this term over the years. The Max Backups option is not the maximum number of backups your file server can hold. It's the maximum number of backups it will keep per VM that you back up. So if we only write one, it'll only back up each VM with one instance. If I write something like four, I can catch up to four different versions of a single backup file. And when I add a fifth, it will overwrite the oldest version. And then down here under content, we're gonna make sure VZ dump backup file is selected to allow our file server to store backup files. And then if I hadn't done so already, I would click add. But as I've already configured mine, I'm gonna click the X. So now when I go to backup a virtual machine, we'll go to Pi-hole, backup, and backup now. You can see my file share is now an option to store my backup files. Now this is the method that I chose to move all of my VMs from one Proxmox server to another. So if I go down to my craft-freenas file server and click on content, you can see all of the backup files that I've captured right there. And it's just as easy to restore them because I create the same connection on my new Proxmox server, go to content, select a backup file and click restore. Now there is another method of transferring virtual machines from one Proxmox server to another, and that's by setting up a cluster. However, in my case, since I'm simply decommissioning an old server and setting up a new one with new hardware, don't set up a cluster as you'll end up with, well, a cluster that you have to clean up later. Don't worry, I will be doing a tutorial on clustering at a later date. So again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that one. 
And that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions or comments about this process, make sure to leave them down below and make sure to like this video and subscribe to Craft Computing on your way down there. If you like the content you see on this channel, consider joining my Patreon. Link is down in the video description below. It's what allows me to make content like this. And as a perk, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat directly with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads. Thank you guys so much for watching this one, and as always, I will see you in the next video. I'd say cheers, but, well, that backup took 35 minutes. Bye. Beer for today is from Free State Beer. It is their Storm Chaser IPA. This American IPA is a lightning strike of citrus chased by a gust of tropical hop notes. They give an ABV? Oh, there it is. Six-ish ABV? For some reason, the ABV is like on a scale. I'm gonna guess five and a half or six because the X isn't quite on the six line. I'm not sure how that's legal. Free State Brewing Company, Lawrence, Kansas. A lightning strike of citrus. Well, I can tell you this much. There's almost no citrus on the nose of this. And very little in the flavor, too. You can taste some hops, kind of, uh, there on the back side of it. I wouldn't call that a lightning strike of citrus. It's a very earthy, almost herbal-like IPA. It's good. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a good flavor. But when I'm expecting a lightning strike of orange and guava and pineapple, and I end up with a mouthful of, like, oregano and dirt. Just not quite what I was expecting. Yeah, there's not a hint of tropical flavor in this. Very, very weird that they try to make that a selling point, and then uh, just leave it out. Lightning strike of citrus chased by a gust of tropical hop notes. Kansas, what exactly do you consider tropical? South Texas, maybe. This is more San Antonio than Caribbean. So, final thoughts. It's it's not a bad beer at all. Uh, it's a pretty solid IPA, kind of kind of in a West Coast style. You know, I'd, I'd say more of like a early two thousands kind of kind of style. You know, the Sierra Nevada IPA, the the Stone West Coast IPA. I have no idea what they were trying to do here, but it obviously didn't work based on their description. And that's ultimately where I will judge a beer: is what did you think it will taste like versus what does it end up tasting like, and there's no citrus in this. There, there's none of the traditional citrus notes that I could even fathom being in this beer. Uh, it's a good beer, but you lose points for, uh, well, not delivering. I take it back. It's just okay.